Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. I think this may look familiar to most of our viewership. Not only because I got the man, the myth, the legend, Clint Smith with me, but we're in his uh, his man cave, which I, I would call cool. I would think this is this is like one of the coolest places, the best man cave I've ever seen. Clint, he called it. Uh, I think he referred to it as Liddy AF. I didn't know what that meant, yeah, but you know, I mean, it was yeah, uh, some yeah. kind of slang term. No slang, but slang. whatever it is, yeah, it's it's pretty neat. So we're in here, and this is a series that I know you guys really appreciate when we do the top five guns for guests that we have on the program. And it is, of course, we joke around on the program a lot. I joke with Clint, yep. but it is an absolute honor uh, for me to even be here and to have I appreciate you on it. The We've had a lot of fun together. Yeah, so we're yeah. like, uh, working on rifles now, and I appreciate you asking uh, me to sort of make a judgment call on the top, top five guns, so that that's cool. And, and we love it, and I want to hear it, and I know that the viewers want to hear it, so I'm just going to shut the up now and let you roll no, ahead. well the deal with it is is you talked about to me the idea that we would hey what's our what are guns that are favorites of yours and guns to me are different than they are to other people one i don't collect guns like in the sense of having this stored up i had no safe princess every gun i own i shoot um but the other side of that coin is is uh, like you have guns that you would call your favorites i mean and for me they're tools so uh we'll start right into it so we don't get into it and long guns um, most people will or won't recognize this, depending on where you are longevity wise. I have no clue. What yeah, that is. this is a Sharp rifle. Um, this one is about 25 years old, and it was built by Shiloh Sharps in Big Timber, Montana. So it's not like uh, well, 1877. It's a, shall we say, a more modern version. Mm -hmm. But it is a black powder gun, which is appropriate for uh, guns that like this to shoot black powder in them. Um, this actually is my hunting rifle. Uh, and uh, when I used to hunt, I'm not opposed to hunting, I just don't do it anymore, you know, whatever. Um, but when I hunted, um, I kind of shot everything with this gun. I shot American bison, I shot elk, I shot antelope, um, and I used basically the government standard load, which is a 520 grain bullet and oh, about 70 shit. grains of black powder. And then uh, this one I have a little bit different sight on. Uh, I normally, if I hunt, I'd use just a regular small aperture. This one's a little bit better. and. Uh, not being ugly, but um, we both joke about it. But it's a true thing. I'm getting older, and as I get older, my eyes change a little bit. So this is a diopter so that I'm able to adjust it, much mm -hmm. like when you go to the optometrist. So if somebody goes, what the hell is that big-ass thing? It's a diopter. So I can literally rotate it and get different aperture sizes if you see it so mm -hmm. that I'm able to pick the one that gathers the most light. Right. So it kind of gives you an idea. Single shot, um, proper etiquette for sharps. Keep your finger off the trigger, uh, the hammer like here and then it's a lever gun okay a falling block so it mm -hmm. drops in round goes in in this case you have to lay it back throw it in and then shut it back up and go to work and um you know a uh, great gun i've had it a long time uh shoot very well and it would be like what i would say a gun for a sport um if i had to use a gun like that for self-defense i have no problem with that you know <laughs> that part of the deal with me is i have an interest in how to fight with a gun. I don't care what the gun is. It, right. you know, I don't care if it's a trapdoor Springfield or a sharp rifle or a double action revolver. What's the best way to manipulate the gun? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the thing I'm looking for in, in that. So that's one version. And, you know, from a historical standpoint, you're talking 1870s as far as the gun being produced in its original format. Um, this one is um, the next one. Uh, and it's an M14 or M1A, depending on what versions you look at. And this is a simple equation for me. This is really the rifle that I grew up with. So this is what I shot when I was in the Marine Corps in boot camp. It's what I you know, used uh, when I was in Vietnam. And so there is a lot of attachment to this in the sense of I learned a lot of lessons, uh, some of them good and some of them bad. Uh, but 308, uh, shortest service rifle life of any American service rifle. So about a nominal 1954 until they fully truly adopted the we'll say mid 60s right, the, right. the ar the m14 uh, i'm sorry the m4 right. uh, slash m16 version so that kind of gives you an idea uh box fed 20 round magazine uh completely legal in california by the way and you just can have a 10 round magazine uh, and if i lived in california okay i would <laughs> like uh that would be the rifle that i would have but again it's it's I got it. It's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit heavier. You know, we got all that kind of stuff. Tell so me, tell me more about this specific one. This specific one I've had for quite a while, and it started its life uh, with the. Uh, I think it was a, a Springfield Armory, but it had a big, heavy, bull stainless barrel on it, which is completely, remarkably stupid, in my opinion. Uh, and I found an old, grumpy, retired Marine Corps armor 
who had an original barrel, like in the wrapper. I'm sure it was like carried out the back door. Uh, he rebuilt it and it's in the configuration that um, of the rifle that I use. So it has a fiberglass stock. I didn't have wood and has, you know, um, that sort of green and they, they come in different colors. Normally when you saw them, they had sort of a dirty looking brown stock to it. Uh, so hence, you know, it's got a coat of paint on it. Uh, iron sight gun, um, very, very, very consistent. I have my original logbook from when I shot rifle in the Marine Corps, um, and I needed to add exactly one more click to all my dope to make all my dope good mm -hmm. as far as dialing the numbers up on the guns. Okay, we want to shoot at 300, you come up to 12, and then you go from there. So, um, and you already know the trail weight, and I got it. Everyone's in the 6.5, what the hell now? Um, but, like, uh, yeah, it, it's just same thing you know you everybody you know it's a lot of people go oh 1967 chevelle you know okay great that's the car you liked you know you had it in high school you get it so that was kind of my version of high school only different there was some rice patties involved and stuff like that but it's not a big deal so kind of gets a give you an idea um the next one on the list that i was allowed to do um is it kind of is contrary this is my very first ever 1911. i bought it in 1970. i paid a hundred dollars for it uh, I completely, totally shot it to pieces. I've had four or five slides on it. Uh, I've had barrels that basically throat erosion completely gone. And uh, it was, it's went through, uh, trust me, it went through a lot of changes. It used to have a lower half was uh, silver and the top half was blue. And it, one time I had an engraved slide. But maybe four or five years ago, I had Jason Burton from Heirloom Precision, mm -hmm. who, you know, is a friend of mine. Uh, he completely took the gun back to retro. Um, it has exactly that era of stuff. The only variable is it has sights that you can see. But this particular gun is 2797LW, which was made in 1949. Uh -huh. So it's the same year I was born. 45 so, caliber gun. What of the components, expressed as a percentage, do you think are still original to that gun? The frame. <laughs> yeah. I figured. And That's what frame, it sounded yeah. like. And yeah. the, even the frame has a crack and a drill hole in it. But I've literally shot thousands of rounds through the gun after the frame cracked, uh -huh. which is not unusual for them at the, the end of the rail on the frame. And um, uh, it's, you know, they're, um, yeah, it's, it's a solid gun. And and well, and this is a perfect opportunity to right. bisect this video because you're known, you're well known within the industry as mm -hmm. being a, like a 1911 proponent. Yes. And so, why the 1911? Um, for me, you know, it's the same thing. I sort of grew up with it. My first 1911, I had one in 1968. Uh, to be honest with you, if I was standing in a phone booth, I couldn't shoot my way out of the place with the damn thing mm -hmm. uh, compared to like literally what I knew, you know, 30 years later or 30 years ago, because I stretched sort of that whole time frame. But um, I just simply have never had a problem with a gun. I've never had a problem picking one up. I've never had a problem, you know. And, and you know, like in the 70s, uh, Armand Swenson and a lot of guys were building the guns, and they were basically like a box of razor blades. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if you would, you know, do the stuff that we do with it today, you would like, ah. Mm -hmm. And so I remember that era, and then that transition to when the guns still became very popular. You know what I mean? So um, I like the caliber. Uh, in this case, I like the weight of the gun. I've never felt like I was underarmed because I didn't have high cap. And it's the old gun. I'm an old guy, so I get a buy on that, okay? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, like you and I were talking, hey, we remember when gas was 99 cents a gallon. Right. Yeah, sure. Well, I, you know, so like this, I paid 100 bucks for it, you know? Um, so you can't really find them too much anymore. This one has just, when you ask about parts, just this, just little clint quirks. Uh, I always have lanyard rings on my pistols. Okay, um, and um, this one, other than that, is pretty much in the correct configuration. It has a little bit of a bobtail on it because they always kind of barky. And then it has, of course, sights, because uh, when you get to be 71, you can't see shit. No, wait, your time's coming. Uh, and uh, the deal with it is, is um, it has sights I can see it, and that's cool. And same thing, I would never in my own mind's eye feel underarmed. I do want to point out one thing when you talk about the industry in 1911s. I have never, ever, okay, said that everyone should have that gun, okay? There are people who shouldn't have that gun, all right? I mean, like, they shouldn't carry that kind of gun. And, you know, today with Glocks, which I like and have several, um, you know, the deal with it is, is it's just simply choices. And, you know, I'm allowed to change too. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, that's a pretty awesome idea that old grumpy guy would change. So, you know, like uh, when we were working. Today, I was blown away when yeah, you actually had a Glock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a Glock and people go, oh my God. And I go, yeah, it's, you know, they cost 500 bucks. They work. 
Okay, they're ugly as shit and no one cares. You know what I mean? What do I care? I, no one's gonna, we're not gonna have a beauty contest when the fight right. starts. We're gonna have, can I work this gun and survive with it and use it and stuff like that? And so, you know, I, got, I have no problem with it. You know, the pretext of this, in my understanding, and can I use the right word, it was what guns is are my favorite guns or what guns do I like? Mm -hmm. So that would be, the, you know, that format. So you kind of get an idea. The next one I got to cheat because you said that you could have five guns. I could have five guns. Yes, if I, okay. um, that said, when it comes to revolvers, revolvers, okay, are carried in a brace too. A true gentleman would always carry a second sidearm. So these are a brace of pistols. This, uh, I can show you one because the other one's absolutely stone cold, exactly like it. They're 45 ACP, they use a full moon. Uh, they're older, 25-2 Smith & Wessons. Um, they've been redone and reworked by Hamilton Bowen. Uh, and if you don't know who that guy is, you need to like research because that, that guy is, you, he's one of the very few people that I truly know that you could give him a bar of steel and he'll give you a gun back, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so uh, we've had a, a long-standing relationship and um, I use Spico grips on them. Uh, and, um, you know, so that people can see that, yes, they do look alike, they do look alike, okay? And um, I have like uh, two inside the waistband holes. So people go, that's a really a big gun. I go, I got it. Always remember though, when it comes to guns, okay? Uh, when you carry them, none of them can be too small. When you fight with them, none of them can be too big. Mm -hmm. So like, I can't think of anything better than being in a really bad spot and taking out a big gun. And mm -hmm. so that's a big gun. 45 ACP and I get it, you know, 44 million, 65, what the hell, and I got it. But uh, it's just just that format, so. Sure, and it's funny because we uh, we had the, this is the second time I've done the urban rifle course, which by the way, if you can ever do it, do it. I mean, look at this guy. I don't know how many more years he's gonna be doing it, right? <laughs> yeah. So the, but it was funny because you mentioned we were talking about like the chief mm -hmm. special. And you said, unironically, you know, it's like, I, we always joke about the New York Reload. Right. You know, but you said, hey, that, that's actually really sure. not a bad idea. Sure. Well, and, you know, and some people insist on carrying a five-shot chief, which I think, you know, is probably the worst gun to carry for a defensive gun. And I don't mean it in an ugly way. So I think that's one of the single highest selling guns that Smith & Wesson makes was the five-shot chief. I think that's a true story. Uh, you know, I got one, I shot it, I shoot it, I have it, I get it, no problem. I don't personally agree with the new ones like Synscandium and yeah, 357 yeah. Magnum, because you know, like you pull the trigger, it feels like your hand got hit by a ball bat. Like what, what the hell was that? But that said, where we're going with this is if I'm carrying one of those and I get it, I get it, okay? I really get it, all right? That's the gun, I got it. It's just like, hey, I like this, you like that, it's cool. And then people will carry a speed loader and I go like, well, here's a thought. If you're gonna carry a speed loader, a speed loader is almost as big as the gun. Mm -hmm. Why not just carry a second gun? Okay, one is none, two is one, three is better. And you even know? that the Scandium one that you were talking sure. about, that not favorably, right. I, I actually just reviewed that on the channel right. like maybe a month ago. Right. And the 340 PD, it only weighs like 10 or 11 ounces. Sure. So I mean, really. It's awesome gun and a pocket gun and it's cool. And like you said, um, you know, I am not trashing the gun. I need people to understand that. I get it, people want to carry that gun. What I'm saying is, is you really better know what the hell you're doing with that gun. Because the sights are usually reasonably feeble, although much better than they used to be. Right. Okay, now they got a little green yeah, glow that, thing on it right. or something yeah, like that, right? Yeah. And they got bigger stocks, and that's an awesome thing. You know, like, why would I hold? Because, like, if you think about it, most stocks are made wrong for your hand. Your hand closes like that. So it's small at the bottom and big at the top. But most stocks are made in reverse. So now, of course, you can put rubber ones on that thing, stuff it full of magnums, and beat the hell out of your hand if you want to. But my deal with it was, I think under the duress of application, like if we're talking about seriously using the gun, because you know me, I'm interested in, this is about fighting. This is not about like a three gun match. I think the idea is if you shoot the gun and you got a heart rate of 200, you got poop in your shorts, the stuff is going south, okay? I think it might be just as easy to haul the second gun out, right. okay? And you know, I don't advocate necessarily chunking it on the floor, but conceptually, yes, this is not working. Funk get another one that does okay so and then you know like you said there's no weight to them and stuff like that right so, so let's go ahead and screw the muzzle brake in this video's ear yeah put it out of its misery bring us to the coup de gras okay cool so this is uh arguably uh my favorite pair 
The deal with this is these are a pair of Colts that I had made early on. They're made at the Colt factory when Colt was still a factory. They're factory engraved. They're factory lettered. They all that fancy shit that people talk about. The serial numbers are my initial CAS 1 and 2. I shoot these guns, okay? They're 45 Colt, uh, and some people call it long Colt. I'm not going to get into that. Um, they are actually as identical as you can make a gun. Some people are be familiar with the Colt uh, book of engraving with the big silver horse on it. I went through the book, found everything that was odd, a pair engraved, your name, mm -hmm. all that. Okay, special serial numbers. And I had the guns built that way. So um, they kind of worked that way. Someone, of course, who is very clever will go like, what the hell's wrong with the grip? Nothing, okay? The gun will want to roll in your hand so the notch is so that your finger can come underneath and hold the gun from rolling so it doesn't roll back in your hand like they did in the old Tom Mix movies. So that would be, again, a, pr a brace. So there's a pair of these bad boys. Okay, a right and a left, okay? And I usually carry one on the right and two on the left. Have That's you people. carried those in public? I have, okay, with full black powder loads, mm -hmm. okay, because most people have never seen black powder. And the deal with it is I carried them, and of course you only carry five rounds. Uh, I carried them for a while, like six months in Texas, because I wanted to know. And what it will do when you have a gun like that, that you have to cock and shoot it, only holds five, you have to dick around, it will make you change how you think tactically. I didn't say it was a smart idea. I said that's what I did. <laughs> but one good thing is if you're in close, like me to the camera, okay, and shoot somebody, they will be on fire mm -hmm. as well as being shot. So that's kind of the, the deal with them. So um, imagine your dick being put in the dirt by, uh, by yeah. a pair of those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Your Honor, I shot him with the best gun I owned. Okay. You know, I mean, I don't know what to. And, you know, the deal with it, I get all this stuff. And like I said, you said, and you mentioned it, although people probably didn't catch it. You saw me today, I was carrying a Glock. I get it, okay? They're not for everyone. Not everyone needs a sharps, not everyone needs this. You know, I have M4s, I, you know what I'm saying? Um, but when the, the context was, what did I like? Mm -hmm. So those are the things I like. No, and, and this is precisely what we, I mean, this is everything that I wanted and more. Sure. It was yeah. a little bit of, of what I expected and, and a couple of surprises. It doesn't matter what the gun is. If you have the gun, you need to train. Possession doesn't equate to competency. Please, I'm asking you, okay? And everybody goes, oh, you're all, I got it. I know all the stuff that people say about me, all right? But I say to you, if you're actually gonna carry a gun, try to shoot the gun. Personally, if I own a Glock, and I do, I don't own one. I own one plus one plus one. One is none, two is one, and the third one is always spare parts. So as an ending, that would be something that would be helpful in my mind's eye. But whether or not people agree with you or disagree with you, I don't think anyone would disagree that, that you're a legend and you're respected within the yeah. community. And again, I mean, I'm, I'm flattered that you're on our garbage YouTube channel. Yeah. This oh, no, this is awesome. I like it. I think, uh, you know, it's good. Uh, what do you call it? Everybody subscribe. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. See, you hear that? The boss just yeah, said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Guys, thanks a ton for watching. We're going to be bringing you more content from Thunder Ranch. Take care. Thank you.